Today, I'm very happy to be joined by the Houston Astros ace pitcher, a favorite here in Houston, the great Lance McCullers Jr. Thank you for joining Lance. What's up, my man? Yeah, I appreciate those, uh, those kind words. I'm, I'm happy to be here with you. I appreciate you joining, man. And, you know, we all like uh, really missed you during the LCS and World Series. And, you know, I think everybody in Houston knows uh, how different it could have been. But, you know, these things happen, unfortunately. And, you know, hopefully this upcoming year we can, you know, finish the job. So have you uh, fully recovered from that forearm strain injury that happened during against the White Sox? And, you know, I was happy to hear that you didn't need surgery on it. And I heard that in December you would start throwing in a month. So uh, how's it going? Yeah, you know, I've been I've been rehabbing and the, the lockouts made it tough because the people I would usually um, rely on for the rehab um, I haven't been able to speak to or, um, you know, communicate with. So it, it's been a little bit difficult. I'm not going to lie. The, the rehab has been a little choppy. Uh, I'm, I was hoping to be a little bit further along than I am right now. But, you know, we, we have uh, the unfortunate circumstance of, of being locked out. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm still trying and still pushing. Um, and, and rehab in a way, but I, I have been throwing and, you know, so far everything's been going okay. We'll, we'll see as I start moving on to the mound and things of that nature, um, how I start feeling. Uh, but, you know, regardless, you know, I'm, I'm ready to uh, get back and, you know, just try to try to help the team any way I can. Uh, the injury I had in, in October was much more, it was, it was much worse. And of course we were, we were putting off, um, we were trying to, pray for a miracle and maybe something would have happened where I could have pitched in the world series. But, um, I had a pretty good strain of my flexor tendon in my forearm. It was, it was off the bone quite a bit. So, um, you know, we just, uh, have to keep hoping it's, it's healing up well as I continue my rehab and throwing. Right. So you were mentioning how the lockout, I think has had a negative effect on your recovery. Specifically, I saw that you weren't able to uh, work with team trainers or use the facility. So how have you been uh, kind of dealing with that? Do you get to work with, any private trainers or something like that? Yeah, well, I'm a little bit disappointed in the way the MLBs handled it. Um, you know, obviously, they're the ones that imposed the lockout. The players were not for that. Um, and then, you know, we're at a crunch time now, and, and the, we're not in spring training. And they took a nice leisure seven-week break uh, from when they locked us out to when they decided to call us and, you know, re-up uh, communication. So, I'm a little bit frustrated. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, during the NHL lockout just about a year or two ago, they allowed players who were previously injured to continue to work with, you know, the team and, and you know, will allow the team to oversee their rehab because as much as the MLB wants to act like we're, we're not, you know, their players or a part of you know, organizations, you know, we are. And it doesn't have any um, positive effect. You know, for me, I'm behind in my rehab. Um, if I had to guess, you know, I, I don't know if I, if I'll be ready opening day just right now. And it's frustrating for me because I'm ultimately, I'm the one who suffers and the fans are the one who suffers, you know, while we, um, while we argue away. So I'm a little bit frustrated with the process. Right. So, yeah. So that leads me to my next one. Are you, I really want to hear your thoughts on this lockout. So have you been involved in any of the meetings or anything, but uh, really what is that one critical issue that uh, the players association and the owners haven't really agreed on relating to the new CBA? Well, I, I'm, I'm the player rep for the Astros. Um, Jason Castro is also on the executive board. So currently uh, he's actually down in West Palm and I'm going tomorrow. So I'll be in West Palm Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for the meetings. Um, you know, I, I can't get too specific because, you know, these are things that as the union, I know there's a lot of leaks out there, but, um, you know, coming from me and, you know, I, I, as a representative, I want to make sure we keep things in house, but, I think the fans should know that we are fighting for a, a better product. We're fighting for the young guys, the young players who are, are, you know, coming after us. And we're trying to do things that we think the fans would appreciate and would bring, you know, competitiveness to the league and uh, would benefit, um, you know, players and fans alike. Um, you know, so we're, we're trying to come to an agreement that works for everybody um, and, you know, and not just, uh, not just, uh, you know, one group of people. Right. So I know, you know, we're supposed to be having daily meetings and some of that sort. And unless they come to an agreement by February 28th, I think opening day would get pushed back. So, you know, I just hope that we can come to an agreement and you know, get to see baseball again, because that's what, you know, we, the fans really want to see. But um, what's the schedule like really for you these days? I mean, do you find time to, you know, you know, rehab every single day to maybe 
uh, throw and stay in shapes? Because normally I think you guys would be uh, preparing for spring training in Florida. So what have you got, what have you been doing to now keep yourself busy? I mean, yeah, I rehab and lift, you know, every single day, um, some, except for usually Sundays. Um, you know, a lot of guys, I think you saw Breggy, he's been doing like a little modified spring training at Rice University. Um, so that's great because there's a lot of players out there, some free agents, uh, you know, still waiting to sign and other guys who are kind of getting in shape. I know a lot of guys are heading to parks near their homes and trying to kind of go through a, a spring training like day. Um, things of that nature. And that's another date that the MLB, you know, put on us. They, they out of nowhere said the 28th, um, you know, is not, we're not agreed upon, then, you know, we're going to miss games. And you know, that kind of came out of nowhere. It's another, another deadline, another type of tactic that they're trying to, you know, force us along. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're really waiting for the MLB, um, you know, to, to be serious about coming to an agreement so we can get this done. I mean, players we've already lost you know parts of our careers in COVID season and you know we're not trying to miss any more but at the same time we understand that you know what we do here and during the CBA moving forward re reflects on us and uh, generations to come as far as you know what they're what they are going to be kind of inheriting in, in the game and you know we're trying to fight for you know a, a better fair future. Yeah I totally agree man you know I really hope you guys can you know get this agreement and we'll have baseball soon but and I want to hear something about, I know your dad, Lance McCullers, he pitched a lot um, in the majors for, you know, many teams. So how do you think he's helped you um, become a better pitcher? What is something that you've learned from him? Yeah, well, my, my dad played, you know, in the 80s. And, um, you know, he was, uh, I think more than anything, he was just a, a really good dad. You know, he is a good dad. Um, and, you know, I, I think at times we can butt heads for sure, because, you know, I have my way of thinking. He has his ways of thinking. And. Um, we're both a little bit hard headed, but, um, you know, he, he's just taught me to, you know, appreciate this game, appreciate this ride. It doesn't last long and, um, you know, try to, you know, make a difference while I'm here and, you know, connect with the fans and, um, immerse yourself in, you know, the time in, in this game. Um, I hope, you know, that, um, you know, I'm a Houston Astro for life and hopefully, you know, I, I touch a lot of people along the way because that's ultimately what, um, you know, being in this position is about and, um, you know, what I enjoy most. Yeah, of course. And we're all big fans of you here in Houston, for sure, man. You're one of our favorites. And, you know, now that you've been in Houston for su such a long time, what are some of your, let's say, like your favorite places around H-Town? You know, I saw that you and your family went to the zoo a while back. So, you know, where do you like to go to your favorite restaurants or anything of that sort? Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, so many. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I, um, I love going to a blended coffee shop. They have one. Uh, they have two in, in the Houston area. I go to Cabo as well. Um, you know, some of my like breakfast spots are tinies. I go to local foods a lot, uh, BCN, uh, Uchi, um, you know, Patente downtown, you know, with special occasions I head to, uh, Vibrant's closed right now. I'm really hoping they come back, uh, Real right, right there near Vibrant as well. So, I mean, there's so many good places, um, it's endless. And that's one of the things I love most about Houston, besides just the people and the culture, but just the food and, you know, being able to, um, you know, eat at like, act like, like, you know, not that I have anything against chain restaurants or anything. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, I grew up eating chilies and, you know, doing, doing the whole deal, but just being able to eat places that are like, you know, individual or for the most part, individual for the city or for the state, I think is really cool. Yeah, for sure, man. I, you know, I love to see that that you're showing support for a bunch of restaurants here in Houston. And, you know, going back to the World Series, I, I you had mentioned that when you're you're gonna be that the biggest cheerleader for the Astros during that stretch. And, you know, what, what was some maybe piece of advice you tried to give guys like Fromber and Luis um, during that time to really help them uh, be strong? Yeah, you know, I, I just, during that time, you just, all you can do is just try to support your team and, um, you know, cheer them on throughout throughout the games, you know, win, win or lose and, you know, try to be the same, you know, leader you are in the locker room when you're playing, you know, you don't want to, you know, get injured or not be playing well and all of a sudden you disappear, you know, because, you know, you got to, you got to be the same guy, you got to be the same, you know, type of, uh, you know, influence and leader that, um, you know, you, you are when you're pitching well and, and everything's, you know, going extremely well for you. So, just trying to be there for the guys ultimately was probably the, the biggest part. Um, 
you know, helping some of the pitchers as far as scouting reports or helping with mechanics or tips or, or things of, of that nature. You know, you just you just do your best. You know, you're, you're you feel terrible you're not out there because that's what you're supposed to. That's what you want to be doing. Um, but you, you do the best you can in those situations. Um, and it really comes down to just supporting the guys and cheering them on. Yeah, man, you're definitely a great teammate. You know, I was really happy to see all the stuff that you're doing to help some of the younger guys. And, you know, when I interviewed Jose Altuve right before the postseason, I mentioned, I asked him what his favorite thing about Fromber was. And he said that he, he likes that Fromber likes to pitch for contact. So it keeps him pretty involved um, on the, in the game. So do you also like to pitch for contact or are you primarily, you know, trying to get that strikeout or does your approach kind of change midway through that bat? Uh, I think it depends game to game, honestly. Uh, it depends on how you're feeling game to game, how your stuff's working um, on any given day. I mean, some days you go out there and sometimes you have extra rest and you feel a little bit off or you, you know, you, you're on normal rest and, um, you know, maybe you're a little bit sore, whatever the case is. So it really just depends on like lineup, um, how you're feeling um, and, you know, opportunities as far as, you know, strikeouts go. I mean, earlier in my career, I definitely would say I, I wanted to strike out before the at-bat even started, but, you know, I'm much more, um, I'm, 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 I'm much more, I guess, at this stage of my career, you know, quote unquote mature. And I, I try to read the situations and if our bullpen's kind of lagging one day or they've been, they've been overused or whatever the case is, um, you know, try to pitch the contact, try to go deep into the games. Um, if you're facing guys, you, you think um, put the, put the ball on the ground a lot, uh, just depending on the lineup, you can, you know, try to, you know, go for that. So it, it's really kind of strategic and just depends on, uh, depends on the day, depends on the lineup, but um, you know, weak contact is 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 probably king, especially if it's early in the lineup, early in the count, I should say. Yeah, thanks for explaining that. And I want to talk about Dusty because he just, you know, he's going to be, be being here with the, as the manager. You know, a lot of people like me. I'm a big fan of what Dusty's been doing here. So, how do you kind of compare him and his approach, maybe in that clubhouse or during the game, compared to AJ Hinch, who uh, won us World Series as well? Yeah, I mean, you know, AJ is my first manager and, you know, someone that I, I really had to help me grow up, I would say, you know, in the big leagues and, you, you know, during those like young growing pains and, you know, things of that nature. So I'm going to have a special place for AJ just because, you know, I, I, we did accomplish so much together and, um, you know, he was there for me, you know, every step of the way, but Dusty's just been so, so awesome. Um, you know, and he just has this really cool way of, of going about um, his day and his life and, uh, doesn't let too too many things bother him, and you know, you know, just kind of enjoys enjoys the ride. And I think that sometimes in this game, you you get caught up in the day to day or social media, and um, you know, sometimes it can consume you. But you know, Dusty is just one of those guys that you know just loves being around baseball, loves being around the clubhouse, and you know, has that energy, and it rubs off on it rubs off on you know his team, and we play loose, and we play excited, and we play fun, and. And Dusty's just a, a special baseball man. Yeah, he seems to, you guys seem to have a lot of fun with him leading the way. And, you know, last season you had your best statistical year, 162 and a third innings, 3.16 ERA, 13 wins, 185 strikeouts. But I think the one issue was walks. So how are you kind of trying to improve at that for this season, trying to keep it in the zone? Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of one of those things. It, it, it kind of comes with, you know, the way I pitched, but for sure, you know, I, I think um, I'm trying to get my four seam back. I mean, I've been trying for years, but uh, when you're a, a sinker ball guy, especially in today's game, you have to be a little bit more careful on where you throw that sinker and, and how you use it. So that, that gives me a little bit less room for error. You know, when you're throwing four seams, a lot of times guys that are throwing four seams really aren't even throwing to a spot they're just kind of throwing up and so I think it gives them a little bit more freedom and guys are chasing a little bit more up in the zone nowadays and they're, they're you know you, there's more room up there to kind of expand and, and, and get away with as far as sinkers you know I'm, I'm I really got to try to be pinpoint especially to lefties that was a problem for me this year um my walks to lefties and you know things things come and go um you you, you know one one day you feel like you can't miss with your breaking ball or your change up and the next day you go into you know that next game and you feel like you have a good game plan based off of your bullpen and things like that and all of a sudden you walk a couple guys in the first few innings with the with the plan you had and you have you have to adjust on the fly um so walks you know you know definitely a little bit high but um it's a little bit of a trade-off because I, I think my batting average against last year was was really good um, so, you know, 
you, you can't have both. You know, you either got to give up some hits and not walk anyone, or if you walk some guys, but you don't give up a lot of hits. Yeah. Um, but ideally, you would do uh, you would do the good at both. So that's a definitely a point of emphasis of mine um, that I can work on. You know, and I think that really just comes from um, you know attacking guys and you know trying to get those early outs. Yeah, I just love the way your approach is, you know, on the mound. I just, you know, love the way that you pitch. It's just a lot of fun watching you play. And, you know, one thing that I really uh, like about you is how you've been so good in these playoff starts. I mean, you had a 0.84 ERA during this postseason, I think a 2.83 ERA in 16 games overall. So is there kind of like a specific routine that you follow before like a big postseason game to clear your mind and truly be your best out there? No, I just think that's what you, that's what you live for as an athlete, you know, being able to be in post seasons, being able to pitch, uh, you know, on the biggest stage against the best teams. And I, I think, you know, it, it brings the best out of me. And I think sometimes, you know, through the, through the lull of the season and how long it is and sometimes monotonous in a way um, you lose focus a little bit. And maybe if you're facing a team that you're expecting to do well against, then you kind of let off the gas and, you know, you don't, you don't do as well as you were hoping, but in those playoff games, you know, that's, that's, that's what you live for. That's what you play for. I mean, in those games, you know, um, it's just really about, it's really just about pride and just trying to do the best to represent the the fans that have supported you all year long. So I think that's why, you know, during those games um, or those moments, you know, I, I, I lock it in and um, I've had some good performances. Yeah, for sure, man. I just hope you, you know, we continue to get many postseason appearances and you'll be able to, you know, showcase your talents, but um, is there like one specific batter that uh, you've had like your biggest battle with somebody who you know, one guy just really stands out as somebody who's given you in like a big challenge? Salvador Perez gave me a tough time really through my whole career, him and Elvis Andres as well. But man, Salvador Perez has got at least three or four homers off me, a lot of extra base hits. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a tough go against him. <laughs> Yeah, you, you'll get, I mean, you'll, you'll lock him down, man. I, I'll trust you. And, you know, I know you're a dad yourself. So how do you kind of manage time being a father's always a major league pitcher? How, how do you kind of manage all that? Well, during the off seasons, it's a lot of waking up super early, trying to get your lift in, trying to get your rehab in, or maybe doing things during your nap um, or doing things at night, you know, just trying to spend as much time with her, um, you know, during the day as I can, you know, these, these, these times go fast. And, you know, you try to enjoy it, you know, when they're here, but during the year, you know, it's, it's time to work and um, you're gone a lot. So just trying to, you know, enjoy those moments when you have them. And um, that's really it. Just, you know, try to try to enjoy the moments that life gives you and, you know, enjoy um, each day with, you know, her and my wife. Yeah. And, you know, is there, you know, what last question for you here, is there anything else that uh, you want your fans to know about you? Something that, um, you know, anything in interesting about you apart from baseball? Uh, not really. You know, just know that I really do have a lot of love and, um, you know, for Houston and for the fans. And, um, you know, I hope, you know, to, to make Houston and, and the Astros fans proud. And um, that's really it. Yeah, of course, man. You definitely do make us proud. And, you know, I got a request for you. Think you could give me a follow on Twitter? I get you a follow on Twitter. I don't okay. go on Twitter much, but I'll do, I'll do it now. Oh, I'll do it now. I'll yeah, do it now. So I, I don't forget. Hold on a second. I'll do it right now. Got you. I uh, appreciate that, man. Boom. All right, man. It's good yeah. seeing you. Yeah. You know, thank you so much, Lance, you know, for taking time out. And, you know, I love talking to you. Huge fan and just uh, wish you the best of luck for the season. Thank you so much. I'll see you around.